Uh, Henk Jan Oving uh, from Geomar uh, Germany. Uh, what do you do as a researcher? So I study uh, organisms in the oceanic water column, which is the water column above the sea floor. It's also called the pelagic zone. And I study the animals that live in, the, in that, in that uh, space, which is the largest living space on the planet, so the largest environment on the, on the planet. Um, and I look at, um, I study uh, squids, so cephalopod mollusks, uh, calamari, and, uh, um, uh, but I also look at communities, pelagic communities of jellyfish and squids and fishes. So uh, you were chair uh, in the session about uh, autoecology. Yes. Uh, can you make a brief uh, overview of that session? Yeah, I think it was a very uh, stimulating uh, session about uh, autoecology, uh, so how groups of animals uh, interact with their environment and, and what kind of physiological and ecological processes um, are of influence on, on that. And um, I think it was a very uh, a session with lots, a wide variety of talks on, on longevity of animals, on reproductive biology of animals, of, and all focus, of course, on deep sea animals. Um, yeah, it was, it was a very good and stimulating discussion. The feedback was good? Yeah. And what do you think there is still missing uh, at, on this point, on this subject? Um, I, think, um, I think a lot of deep sea research is still focused on animals that are living on the seabed, so the benthic communities. and, uh, and uh, yeah, I, I hope to see more focus on animals that live in the water column because it's such a large space and it's a very important space. It has very large populations of, of uh, crucial uh, organisms which sustain uh, food webs and um, which are again subject to, to uh, uh, human exploitation. So for example, tuna fish of uh, feed and other commercial fishes feed on lots of small animals that live in the water column, small fishes, squids, and so to understand these communities of so-called forage species and to understand their autoecology is very important. Yes, because the, um, there is a lot of um, knowledge gaps on this, this type of, of uh, subjects. Yeah. Uh, for example, uh, the definition of deep sea is very wide and nobody here uh, has one definition <laughs> Uh, of that, what is your definition? Well, I, when I define deep sea, I, I define it as the area of uh, below typically 200 meters, so below the photic, below the photic zone. Uh, of course, this is different in, in tropical areas such as Hawaii, where, it, where the photic zone yes. is deeper, like 300 meters. So, but that's, that's what I define as, as the deep sea. Back to the, your research and uh, what is the priority right now? Future steps, future perspectives? For my research? Yes. So I'm, my uh, research focuses on uh, establishing a baseline of uh, pelagic communities of, uh, in the eastern tropical Atlantic, so of, um, in, the, in particular in the Cape Verde area, where there's a, a for the Atlantic and uh, the strong oxygen minimum zone and as a result of climate change, this oxygen minimum zone is expanding. And my research focuses on can we predict how this expanding oxygen minimum zone impacts the, the animal communities that live in the water column. Because animals typically avoid low oxygen areas. So in a future ocean where there's larger oxygen minimum zones, what animals are capable of dealing with these new circumstances and what animals are potential uh, under threat of this of this change and that's my uh, that's my goal okay thank you very much okay you're very welcome <laughs>